Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. In an earlier interview, we talked about the fire sale of European public assets that is taking place during the current crisis. Now we're going to talk about some possible alternatives to that strategy. Now joining us from Davis, California, is Nick Buxton. He's communication manager for Transnational Institute, which provides critical analysis for movements working for social and environmental justice. Thanks for joining us again, Nick. Hi, Paul. So, so talk a little bit about your organization and what you've been talking about in terms of what might be an alternative strategy to privatization. Well, we, we've been working for, for a number of years, particularly on water privatization and supporting movements who are fighting water privatization in the South. Uh, but more recently, in more recent years, we've been looking at a really interesting trend that's happening as, as cities across the whole world have been experiencing the negative impacts of privatization. Uh, they've been, some cities have actually reclaimed control over their water. Uh, and we've documented what have been some of those experiences. Uh, perhaps the most famous example is Paris. Now, Paris is, is the home of Suez and Veolia, two of the biggest water multinationals in the world who, who uh, privatized and took over privatized water systems right across the globe. They, their city decided, despite being the home of these two multinationals, to take back about two or three years ago the water back into public hands. Of course, it led to a lot of resistance from those companies and a lot of attempts at sabotage. But when they took back control, uh, they were able to start to tackle some of those arguments around efficiency and show that they were rather fraudulent. And they found rather by putting it in public hands, they were able to save, in their case, in the first year, they saved 35 million euros which led them to reduce all the rates right across the board by 8% for ordinary Parisians. So they showed that this, what was really happening was that the state subsidies and, and, and the high water rates were really going towards short-term profits and not being invested in the network and not benefiting consumers. And they were also able to do things that private companies wouldn't do. Uh, for example, setting up a very interesting public-public partnerships with other water utilities, particularly in the South, uh, supporting developing countries, uh, creating a whole of um, issues around transparency, setting up a website where people could see what was being repaired, what was being done long term, even having public participation in some decisions about where priorities should go in terms of future investments. So they, they not only showed that this idea that private isn't always efficient was wrong, they also showed that public uh, can can if it's, especially if it's been reinvented and, and including concepts around participation, transparency, solidarity, uh, can play a much bigger social role, and and that's not something that's just happening in Paris. Uh, we looked at communities in in Tanzania and Dar es Salaam where they reclaim their water, and, and the benefits that that's brought to to people in Dar es Salaam. Uh, again, in Canada, Hamilton, Canada, Malaysia, we looked at. Right across the continent. Well, what, uh, there what, were lessons. What was, the, what was the Canadian example? Because uh, there you. It have was a, in Hamilton, Canada. They they took back their water, and they managed to save six million um, Canadian dollars, um, and have also been able to reduce their rates. So, so I know a bit less about the Hamilton example, but they were one of the they were one of the cities that that has been able to again have a bigger picture than just one of saving money, which they've been able to do, but also one of looking more socially and trans and how they could be more of a public in the broad sense of a public good. And where are there any cities now that are sort of fighting that battle to, to uh, either prevent privatization or to publicize something that has been privatized? Yeah, there's, there's, there's many examples. Um, Indonesia and Jakarta, there's, there's some, there's, there are struggles going on. Um, there are, there are lots of struggles across the world, which are, uh, which are fighting it around these issues. Um, some, some of the re-municipalizations haven't been successful. Um, I was reading the other day of one in Bolivia that's been reclaimed, but people are really saying it hasn't lived up to their expectations. So it's not a question that you re-municipalize, you necessarily have success. But if what we were trying to show are the more successful case studies, uh, and, and they have largely been um, successful, but what are the learning points? How can we make sure this experience is universalized? Because one of the things I think we're also trying to show is that it's not a question of returning. 90% of the, in terms of water, 90% is still in public hands. Um, it's, it's a better solution than a private solution, uh, but it also has, in some cases, serious problems. And we need to, we need to reinvent public and make sure it, 
It brings in concepts around transparency, participation, to really ensure that it's a dynamic uh, public good that serves people and serves communities. Is there, and is there a model of that somewhere? Well, that's, that's, I think these are some of the examples we looked at in, in particular Paris, Hamilton, uh, Malaysia, in Dar es Salaam. So, I, so in, Par in Paris, how, what is that transparency? How does the public interact? What's the dynamic? Well, they, 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 they set up uh, through using largely web mechanisms in Paris. It works well there. They've set up a whole citizen and they've set up a whole citizen's water observatory where everyone has a role and is actually involved in some of the running of the company and advising the company. So that's, they've used something called those, yeah, an observatory using various civil society groups um, to, to really have a say in the future of the company. Um, in Buenos Aires, they've, they've set up committees uh, to advise the company. And they're also involved in very interesting public-public partnerships with different cities in the South. So, so there are different examples, but they're ones that, uh, that, that, that do, do, they're not without their flaws, but they do provide some hope. And they show that this idea that privatization is the answer is, is not the case. All right, thanks for joining us, Nick. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. Mm -hmm.